Yes. I'll take uh, it off, and the inside of it will just be like filled with snot. Pit face. I'll like drown in my own snot. Oh my god, it'll be a horrible podcast death. Sneeze in there. It's a lovely way to go. <laughs> Get to the <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Quackcast. This is Quackcast 309 and I am the awesome, um, suave, beautiful Ozan Ocean here. I'm using all the superlatives for myself this time. Yeah, both time you get a little uh, recognition. God knows they won't go anywhere else. So, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Who else is going to compliment you? No one else. And with me. Of course, we have Tansarine, fantastic Tansarine. Hello, Tansarine. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. We have the brilliant Pitface. Ah! <laughs> Doing her best. <laughs> Stallone. <laughs> 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 and we have the amazing Mr. Baines. Hello, Mr. Baines. Hello. I'm going to try not to sniffle too much this week. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Your uh, handkerchief is in the mail. <laughs> and now that you mention it, I want to sniffle, so I'll probably be sniffling. No, I dropped my fluff! No! Fluff? Oh, fluff. Oh. What oh, in the fuck. world? Hawaii Pit, fluff. Pit is eating, eating a bucket of whipped cream. It's basically <laughs> what it is. It's Oreo stuffing, actually. This... She just eats it out of the bowl. We're, we are witnessing currently an exciting action scene. Pitface's thing has dropped on the floor. Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> and she is describing the action to us as it as happened. The spoon went flying. Uh, this is not a well choreographed uh, action scene. And that brings us to the topic of this today's Quackcast boring action scene. <laughs> What is an action scene boring? I think, I think any kind of action that involves okay there, uh, a woman in whipped cream would uh, qualify as interesting to some demographics. So, <laughs> well, that, <that's, laughs> I suppose mileage that's may vary. Yeah. Yes. You've got a little bit in your hair, Excuse actually, Pitsy. Just like no, that's cream it's all not over. His... <laughs> oh, stop it. I wasn't. No. I get the reference. I get the reference. I wasn't even referencing. I was trying to trick you. Trick face. Trick face. Trick face. Oh. It was... Superstar. Yes. Go ahead. Superstar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we're going to be talking about uh, boring action scenes. This was a um, a news post that Tansarine came up with last week. We were going to talk about that, but we had the surprise guest of Becky Dunn. Hyena Hell. Or, yes, also known as Hyena Hell. That's exactly it. Hyena Hell came on. And regaled us with uh, tales of strip joints and all sorts of exciting things that uh, yeah. happens in her daily life. <laughs> but now we're going to be talking about the, the boring action scenes and what makes an action scene... Because bo- action scenes should be fun, but they're often not. They're often bad because the writers of movies are, are not very good and they, they do things to... Um, to spoil their action scenes. Mm-hmm. Yes. They do. And, and Tance is an expert on this because she is now a, a veteran movie script writer, so she knows about action scenes. Yeah, you know, I should I shouldn't tell you guys anything because you <laughs> you always ask me <laughs> oh, on on the podcasts. <laughs> well, you, you do have action scenes in your comic as well, so there's that as well. So I do have action in my comic. And a little bit. A little bit. But before we get into that, we've got to introduce the featured comic this week, which was featured by Mr. Gene Joke. And Gene Joke has given us a feature for, um, I think it's, uh, it's it's called Kingdom of the Red Rose, and it's by Copper Mouflon, or Mouflon, or something like that. So take it away, Mr. Gene Joke, or Ozone Ocean reading Gene Joke, because that's what usually happens. Oh, thank you, Ozone Ocean. <laughs> now, the picture this week is called The Shadow of... The... What did you say it was called? <laughs> Whatever. It's the best. That was very Monty Python-esque. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ozone Ocean, and Gene Joke's feature for the week was... 
Kingdom of the Red Rose by Copper Mouflon. Kingdom of the Red Rose is the tale of Griffin, one of the 5,001 Grim Reapers who ferry souls from the earth to the nether realms. In the opening chapter, we learn what choices Griffin has made that led him to be demoted. The comic is of a very high standard with complex backstory that is unfolding with human stories within an otherworldly epic. This is a deliciously drawn comic. The art is superb, all digital, of, co- uh, of course. Well, you can tell very easily by looking at it that it's digital. Uh, quite uh, full coloured. You'll notice from the beautiful cover of several characters in lovely action poses showing um, all sorts of fantasy kind of um, archetypes. You've got a, a samurai and knights and a robot, a demon, alien looking creatures, a Sinbad sort of figure that uh, this artist has no particular allegiance to any one style or any one um, fantasy world. He spans all of them, and or he or she, I should say. I don't know. I don't want to assume anything. But the artwork is quite, quite strikingly um, colourful and nice-looking. The figures are quite uh, realistic, you know, slightly stylized realism, as you'd see in American comics. Um, the artist has a good... Uh, mastery of angles and space and anatomy so it's it's a good looking piece of work and it's an exciting engaging story there's not too many pages at the moment it's about uh, you know over 50 so that includes the covers and things so there's enough to get into without being uh, intimidated by all the pages there are so enjoy this Kingdom of the Red Rose by a very accomplished um, team, I think it is, a Copper Mouflon. Enjoy. <laughs> and that was the feature by uh, um, by Copper Mouflon, or Mouflon, something like that. Thank you very much for that Gene Joke or Ozone Ocean reading Gene Joke. It was brilliant. Okay, now for the uh, featured music, Gummels has given us the featured music to the adventure Star Fox Adventures. Now, I think I'm pretty sure Star Fox refers to the uh, the, the computer game Star Fox. It was called that. Do you guys remember that? It's a Nintendo thing. No, I remember the video game. Yeah, yeah it was called Star Fox, yeah. right? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's why I have never featured this comic because I'm pretty sure it's like copyrighted material, so I can't do it. But it is an excellent comic, and I would totally feature it if I could, but I can't because I think I think it's to do with a Nintendo game. Yeah, Star Fox. Ooh. So this music I would describe um, it's it's for Star Fox uh, comic. I would describe it as. Firing the main rockets, racing through space, laser pulses and bolts of plasma streak past in glowing lines of destruction as you smoothly barrel roll to avoid them. Wow, man. (laughs) Anybody who knows the game, that's a joke, of course, because this frog character always says, do a barrel roll, do a barrel roll. (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys don't know it. Anyway, no, don't. Anyway, it's, it's a <laughs> beautiful laugh. So attractive. That's why she's got all the boyfriends. Anyway, so, <laughs> that in the ladies sexy... and gentlemen, the nanny. Thank you. <laughs> that in the sexy scuba mask. Scuba mask. Okay, and take it away, Mister Gamolas.
do, 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 do. And that was the music. <laughs> that was the music to um, Star Fox Adventure comic. <laughs> Star Fox Adventures, the comic by who's who's it by? Abby Shabby. Oh, that's a good name. Oh, I like that name. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. Abby it rhymes. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> it rhymes. It's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the word shabby. <laughs> funny. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, shabby. So, action, boring action scenes. This was a topic Tance came up with, and it's it's interesting because you can movies these days. I'm pretty sure I maybe I'm just a grumpy old fart. Well, I I am a grumpy old fart. I'm sure you guys can vouch for that. But yes. I, in addition to that, I think that films these days, the action is getting more boring. I think it is. It's digital and it's unbelievable and it's just boring. What do you guys reckon? I think the uh, digital thing um, really wrecks a lot of action scenes that should work. Yeah. Well, um, even if they don't have those kind of basic building blocks. I'm sure all like Tans and then all the commenters cover you know, what an action scene needs to be for you to care about it or for you to enjoy it or whatever, or to at least give it a good shot. But uh, mm-hmm. I think you're right about that. The CGI thing is, uh, I don't know, they have to be careful with it because it can look really fake and bad and the wrong, things can move too fast and you just don't believe it. Your eyes don't believe it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. Physics, physics, dying. Yeah. Physics, physics. That's it. Well, from my point of view, I think I've written this in the comics there, is if you've got an action film where the rules of the real world apply and it's not stylized, it's not a funky fun thing like a Quentin Tarantino where you expect that it to be larger than life. But if, if the real world rules apply to it and you're expected to believe that things are happening, you expect to be... Um, that this action scene is, uh, you know, you're not gonna um, say. Um, basically, you you expect it to be, um, you know, somewhat believable because these characters are meant to be believable. You're meant to not break out of the suspension of belief. Then, if you have an action scene that that does go too far, you know, which with a lot of these films, you've got the uh, the wires. To, to make people spin and to, to hover in midair for too long when they do their fancy kicks and stuff. And you can see it's got wires because it's so fake and it's so long, yeah. With those kind of things, you don't want that in a film that's meant to be believable because it takes you out of the suspension of disbelief, as well as, you know, digital stuff. But if it's stylized... Well, yeah. that's, that's from my point of view. If it's stylized, like... Um, Sucker Punch, for example, which is a you know a totally fantasy thing, or if it's uh, a Quentin Tarantino film like Kill Bill, where it's you know again, you expect it to be you know like um, Kill Bill, for example, it's where it's mm. you expect it to be yeah large in life, or a um, like one of those uh, kung fu films. It could be larger. Tiger. I mean, could be, yeah. Tiger could be is larger than life, Kill Bill, but uh, it's not it's not outrageous. In the sense that, it's of course, you know that though. it is stylized, but it doesn't go like it doesn't bend things out of shape to the point that that you don't uh, lull yourself into the narrative. So it's like a an extreme, an extreme, as you said, stylized thing. But it still respects the fact that they. I mean, she doesn't ever. Uh, super jump and hover and fly and and, and stuff like that. Yeah, but it, it, even if but, she did, it could be acceptable because it's a um, yeah. larger than life kind of thing. It can. It sometimes. Yeah, it can be. That's but why it doesn't have to be perfectly think, realistic ever. Yeah, but so, yeah. I, I think the one. Being, oh, go on. Go on, Tom. Sorry. Yeah. Now the only thing I want to say is that the one thing that I I really liked. Because it, it factored in the the outrageousness and the lack of of logic in in uh, the in in the physics and the way the, the fights are, are happening was the first matrix because the the sheer fact that it didn't actually compute with physics with how things should they occur that was that was part of the plot that was part of the yeah. story that was 
uh, and and uh, and they really exploit that very well. So you want to see the weird cartoony level yeah. action sequences because they they add to the story, they add to the world and the world building. And they also, they are choreographed and storyboarded in a way that they always advance the plot in the first one. Very Okay, true. the second and third one has problems. Very true. But the um, third one Very true. In, really advances the plot. In everywhere. The Matrix, the whole point of it was that they were, uh, they were changing the laws of physics because it was all based on the code, the source code, and they were able to manipulate it. So it was, yeah, that... That is stylized action in that is completely um, appropriate in in a story level mode, not just a, a a cartoonish kind of thing. Because that's what they were actually doing; they were manipulating the laws of physics to their own own uh, whims. But yeah, as as I'm saying, um, films that are meant to be realistic, if you go too far with the action. See, that's, this is what I don't like about superhero films. I, I love superhero films, but if they go too silly with the action, it can sort of take you out of the suspension of disbelief. Say, a James Bond film as well. Like, I hated the first or the second Daniel Craig James Bond film because it was just... He was committing, like, feats of action that were um, not believable. That so it, it took me out of the suspension of disbelief so it would um it was boring it was too too crazy so that's my point of view anyway you guys you guys can rip that apart or just tell me you know your own perspective for action scenes what what makes them boring or veins go pet face oh I was gonna, I was no. to say pet face <laughs> if we I mean, if you don't have anything to add right now off the cuff, maybe we can read some comments and then see if mm-hmm. we formulate any kind of Riddle mind grand overarching ideas. All right. So there's... there's what did you say? Well, there is a comment by Mr... Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, this is skewer guy. He almost never comments on anything. What's it called again? Oh, bravo. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> never heard of him. <laughs> Your move, Mr. Baines. Your move. <laughs> well, should we give uh, Tansy's basic thesis here, or, or did we already kind of cover it? Well, what, I think we should because she goes over some good um, yeah. kind of background uh, info and some and, and some preliminary sort of ideas about what makes an action sequence good that we could kind of keep in the back of our minds and weigh and see if they kind of right. play out and make sense and stuff. So totally. I think it's good. Yeah, give us a little context. Go. Oh, I'm. I, I read the whole thing now. Yeah. Or I'll read. Yeah, read your post. Read you. Read you. Read okay. you, you yeah. Okay. You can read it in a funny um, voice. No, I, 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 I can't. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> do you do your best tangerine impression, Tanya? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yesterday, I was uh, I was without any problems, I guess. Yesterday, I was looking at reviews on YouTube um, of the last Res- Resident Evil movie that just came out. And while different reviewers had different degrees of leniency on the movies below average quality, uh, everyone was unanimous in that the action in it was a ton and boring. So... Let's talk about action. It's supposed to be the most exciting part of a movie, a web comic or a book. When it becomes boring out of all things, things don't go well for the story. What makes it boring though? From the things the reviewers said, here's a first short list. You don't yet care enough for the characters involved in the action to worry about them. That was okay. one point. That's um, right. Second point, if the action is introductory, you don't get to understand what's happening enough to care. So, Mm -hmm. having an idea of what's going on. (laughs) Um, Three, uh, the action is badly choreographed or cut in a way that the audience can't understand what's going on. Uh, And the action is too much too soon and back to back. To me, all of these issues spell one thing 
The action is boring when it fails to engage the audience in the stakes of the story and or confuses them or throws them out of the story. The action itself is part of the storytelling process. Just like in a musical, the songs are boring if they don't forward the story in a meaningful and important way or don't embellish it in some manner, such as learning about the characters or some such thing. Like so in an action movie or webcomic, the action will be boring if it doesn't do the same. So what about you? How do you use action in your webcomics, if at all? And have you ever found people disengaged in action in a movie or a comic? That gives us all the talking points right there. So, Baines, would you like to go with Bravo? Bravissimo. Yes, I will. <laughs> yes, I will. And I agree with those points, by the way. Those are that's a good like outline of that. What we're talking about. Oh, thank, you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bravo says <laughs> there are action sequences that just don't know when to end. They are poorly paced or just so long and drawn out. <laughs> that you lose interest. That's especially easy in web comics, since most update maybe twice a week and one action sequence goes on for two months. <laughs> With battle upon battle, you just don't care anymore. The whole point of action is immediacy. You're in it and it's happening. If it feels like it will never end, the pacing is off. The reader shouldn't want it to end, but if it goes on too long that he does, the creator screwed the pooch. Oh, that's a terrible thing to say about Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Do you want me to get into this now? Right now? <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. I know. I've, uh, I've never seen Dragon Ball. Because uh... it checks off every single point that Tanya mentioned. So <laughs> I was just... We can go there if you want me to. No, no. Quick? I can't do it quick. No, we'd have to stop the damn quack cast because I will go on. <laughs> I will go on. I can. We, I we kind of want to stop the, the quack cast and have a, like a series of quack casts that go over the period of about a month to get through. <laughs> <laughs> no, Don't okay. fuck with my Dragon Ball Z, man. Go on, go. All right, all right. We have Kim Luster next. A... It is. It is. By <laughs> it is pronounced oh. Drag on Ball Z. You are correct. That, that is. So Kim Luster. Go ahead. Kim Luster says. <laughs> I can't even remember how to do Kim Luster. It's been so long. She says, "Like this." Oh, well, uh, give her it. a little. You do a t- uh, oh, shit. I hear dinner. Uh. <laughs> What'd you say? I hear dinner. What'd you say? I said, "Buy her dinner." <laughs> Buy her. Oh, her. <laughs> I thought. I thought. I. I thought you said, "I heard dinner." But I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That would be Kim face. You do. Kim I... Luster. Oh. Once upon, first. once upon a time in Mexico, the last movie in the mariachi trilogy did this for me. Oh, <laughs> people gruesomely killed left and right, and I actually started rolling my eyes and yawning, and then I I got distracted by some personal upheavals. <laughs> It's the oh, worst no. sexy voice I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is why is sexy voice suddenly a, a southern golem? I'm not sure. <laughs> That's how Oz does it, man. That's it's how, true. It's true. It's, a, it's the way. It's the, <laughs> how it is. You. It's how it is, man. It's how uh, it is. Uh, just teasing you. I've I've only ever seen. Um, <laughs> The, the the middle one in that trilogy, which was good action, so that's a shame to hear that. The third uh, one is yeah, yeah. Good, uh, well, uh, Robert uh, Rodriguez uh, does uh, definitely some heightened action. We were talking about from Dust Till Dawn, which he directed. Mm-hmm. You've seen his other uh, stuff, a little bit uh, Sin City, and obviously the Mariachi. Oh my God, Sin City Flicks. That was horrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. You're 50 years old. And you got a bum ticker. The line from that movie, my brother always says, <laughs> it always makes me laugh. But uh, anyway, yeah. Well, so Ozone Ocean is another up, story, and Ozone cool Ocean movie. says, "Yeah, it, it's not a cool. It's terrible. It's Mariachi's <laughs> one." So. All right. So Ozone Ocean <laughs> says, 
This is the action movie I notion. Action in mm. movies is a big bugbear. I think Mr. Jackie Chan and Chow Yun Fat sort of turned it into an art form beyond what it had ever been. Most people who came after and tried to top them just could not do it physically, so they uh, used tricks and cables and other methods, and it really just cheapens the whole thing, because it looks so fake and pointless. It just becomes silly. Realistic action is always better unless you're deliberately going for something that's hyped up and stylized because that's the kind of movie you're making. Chinese fantasy kung fu films, for example. Or something like Kill Bill or Sucker Punch. It even works in the Matrix film where it fails as when the film is not stylized to the degree and the rules of reality are supposed to function somewhat. The Daniel Craig... <laughs> James Bond films and most superhero films are good examples of being too silly and the action with the action. Sure, so there's superheroes with powers, but powers that have to work in the real world. Um, the fight between Christian Slater and John Travolta in the movie Broken Arrow is a great example of action that's done 100% right. The actors use old-fashioned boxing to fight each other, which totally fits with their characters and the context. They don't use crazy moves and kicks, or magical expert Asian martial arts, just simple man-on-man -man boxing fights. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's why it appeals to Ozone Ocean so much. That's right. <laughs> you know it, sister. I... <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, it was directed. See, dude, you should love Dragon Ball Z. Then I don't get it. Like, <laughs> it should yeah. be your thing. It's got balls in the title. It should be all over. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, it was directed by John Woo, the uh, the character known for his over the top fights in martial arts films, and it goes to show that he knew what he was doing when it came to a fight scene. Some of the best action I've seen in a comic is Kyo Poles. Manga Issa. It's visceral, believable. And the old comic that uh, had Egbert in it, if that's still on Drunk Duck. Anyway, you should check out Manga Issa. It's got great fight scenes and no balls. That's a comic uh, on the duck? It is. It is. Ah, or cool. It it's been on there for quite a while, I think, hasn't it? Many years. Cool. Yeah. 2000. She's an old I bird. I mean, I was making work and it was a. Uh... There you go. It's it's ancient. So that that's my opinion on well, one of my many opinions on this subject. So I hope you all agree completely with me because I'm very autocratic like that, and I can't handle dissent. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I see your point, but I mean, it's like all things; it's always about context. Like like you said, if it's a heightened reality. Or if it takes you there, even if it starts more realistic and then takes you there, it can do yeah. it. Or, you know, comic books are such big, it's such a big deal now in movies. Like, I think people can buy into it. And also anime, even more so. Yeah. Um, people can buy into that heightened reality well, probably I, easier. I, no, go on. I don't mind the heightened reality when there's enough substance, like around it plot wise and I think and this goes into Tanja's original post like it's not just like the action scenes themselves it's not just like how is the fight choreographed which is you know part of it but it's also the build up to it the you know do you care about the people fighting you know you might have a really cool looking fight and like it could be cool as a one off as a little short but if you intend that to be some major part of a climax of a story and you don't give a shit about what's happened around it, then the fight just kind of, it's like, like oh, that was neat, but that doesn't become anything more mean meaningful than that. I agree. That's number one, like, baseline. Like, that's totally the most important thing. You got to have that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the close second is you have to know what's going on. You know, like Tan said, and you, and you said, like, well, yeah, you have to understand what's going on. You have to care. Say, Mad and Max. Uh, I'll go on, Tan. Yeah, 
Mad Max is a great example in that you always yeah. understand what's going on, although it's so chaotic. And suppose, I mean, it's very easy to make it like you cannot understand what's going on, but you always can, and you can follow the focus of the action, where it goes, I mean, and around who the action is taking place or how it's developing and anticipate things and worry about what is coming or what might might not happen or what might happen. And this, of course, makes you engage into the action sequence. I also wanted to mention um, this anime, the uh, Sword of the Stranger, which is, um, I think it's quite a few years old now. Um, and um, it's uh, this uh, story about uh, <coughs> this Japanese um, uh, samurai guy type uh, who is uh, a rogue and, and he gets this engagement with, uh, with uh, this uh, relationship with a boy like a, like a friend relationship I mean. <laughs> um, and it's a, it's a road movie and it has short bursts of action very short all culminating to the last one, which is like the big, super uh, extravaganza of action. And by the time you get there, you are so worried about both of them, and and, and you care about both of them so much that uh, the action is not only engaging; it's it it uh, becomes it 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 sort of um, grows on it on its own, it becomes its own beast because it's a very long action sequence, it's uh, something like uh, 10 minutes or so in the movie and it's all action but by then every every set every stake, every character you know very well everybody from the villain to the, to the heroes and, and you are so worried about you know what is happening and, and uh, whether you know they will survive and everything that even after the, the action finishes, you are still full of anxiety, full of engagement, full of need to, to watch more. And I think that is like the best example of how to, to use action as a, as a storytelling instrument. Because yeah. during it, the characters develop more, like uh, the, the main character, which is, uh, who is the, the samurai, he makes some choices as he's fighting, that are extremely important to his character. So, it is the action that advances the story more. Yeah, it's, it's not just there yeah, that as, was my <laughs> as like a bridge between scenes. It's like, you know, it's not just saying, okay, we have an action <coughs> now, and then we have the next act, where the characters actually advance the plot by their dialogue and their performance or whatever, but then we used to have this action scene as eye candy. That's not what it is. It's actually something that, that's interesting. That's just advancing the story. It's it's functional. I like that. Yeah. I think that really works in the story. So well, the Mad Max yeah. example, I was thinking of the, the, um, the latest Mad Max film, which has great action scenes. It has hyper reality action, you know, that's the, it is slightly more than it, it's larger than life basically but it still works it yeah. still looks good it, it's engaging it's fantastic and those action scenes don't really don't really further the plot very much they're just they're, they're fun they're traditional and and they're enjoyable but they work as they do in that film but yeah they they definitely do not work the way they do in the film you're talking about Tan. So it's a very different kind of thing but they still still do work. I think it makes you spend more time with the character, though, and uh, it is consistent with the character, and you can tell what's going on. So yeah, they they work, yeah. but they don't they don't advance the plot in that way. So there's yeah. different ways of using action, yeah, which which are equally valid. There are a lot of valid ways of using it, but yeah, that is is excellent when they're done when they're used in that way. I think if you like, if you do care about the characters and you're kind of rooting for them and you understand what's going on, that that momentum can carry you through like some chaos. Even if you kind of, if if there's a scene where you don't really t fully understand what's going on, or there's a little bit, you know, it's not perfect or whatever, like that, that can carry you through. Uh, there's mm -hmm. got to be, you can't go too far, or 
you know, yeah. people get bored. Bravo, like Bravo said, they disengage. Yeah, like the, uh, the the Resident Evil films. Too. I think that's a big complaint of them. They've just gone too much into yeah. the, into the action. Right. Did we really need nine of those movies? That's another subject, I guess. I've never seen one. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> I think I've seen one. Yeah, that's about it. The worst action star that I know of is um, uh, Scarlett Johansson. She's in everything at the moment. She's a, she's yeah. the female action star. And everything. But everything I see, if when I see like in Ghost World, she's she's good in that because it fits her her character. She's good. But when I see her in an action film, she's totally unbelievable. Everything that she does is ultra choreographed wire stuff. And none of it's interesting or engaging. It's just like watching a, a computer generated character, you know, like a mannequin. It's because it's yeah. It's contrast is that her acting that's at fault, or that her character? Well, yeah, is that her acting's not great, but the action action scenes, none of it is real ac- action. It's, contrast that with Jackie Chan or Chow Yun Fat, people who know mm. who who. To could do those movements and stuff like it's really interesting it's engaging it's believable but when you see an actor like that do it it's just oh yeah whatever these she spun like, on a wire she without substance yeah that's it it's it's just a, yeah. a a mannequin moving in a way that you know having its legs moved like like a marionette or something i mean who the fuck cares <laughs> whatever <laughs> Yeah, that that's how I see that anyway. I, I I prefer the old days when you had if if you had a woman or a man, whatever, doing action scenes, they would be like a martial artist and they would know how to do the movements and it would be interesting because you'd have the weight and the movement and it would just look believable. You know, quite apart from having it like being part of the plot and all that kind of thing, which is another it's a very valid part, as Towns was saying. It's it's also you know, that's another aspect of having believable action I don't know but this, so this obviously we're into chore- the choreography and the actual look and how it's laid out and all that kind of stuff there's an awesome video by this this guy who um, talks about filmmaking online it's called the channel's called Every Frame of Painting and he does a video about mm-hmm. Jackie Chan action sequences and how they work and why they work so well and why others don't you know so definitely worth adding to the maybe to the links for this episode, um, I just sent you the link. Okay. I'll... Thank you. I mean, I, I must have missed that one. I that's one of the channels I am subscribed to. Yeah. Hello. No, it's amazing. Know, just yeah. Awesome channel. yeah. I'm gonna put that Hello. in the links now. So, should we read out another thing, or, 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 or am I steaming sure. over Pitface and and everyone else who wants to contribute? No, no, you're doing fine. I if I'm not contributing much right now, I'm mainly kind of listening. Like I don't have. A lot right now to contribute. That's fair. Enough. Like I watch a lot of action. It's funny, but I've never really. It's so this is this is a learning experience for me too. So. <laughs> oh yeah, but the action that you have in, in uh, you did me is always very engaging and and very visceral and fun. Thank so you. Maybe you you do have to contribute. And it's, it's fun. No, I know. I'm not saying, you guys, I'm not saying that I've never made an action scene. I've just never really sat down and thought about it before. So right now, I just don't have a lot of input. But thank you for the for the uh, nice things. <laughs> the nice uh, so next, <laughs> next up, we have Tansarin. Would you like to read Tansarin as your best Tansarin, Tansarin? Uh, I'll read Tansarin. She always talks so much. No, she doesn't. She's Jackie fine. Chan's Jackie action scenes are awesome. Pure action and comedy gold in most movies, except the very few deeply dramatic movies he has made. I agree about the stylized action versus whether when you try to make it look grittier. That is more realistic. I also hate shaky cam montages in actions in movies. In, in web comics, I'm fine with long drawn action sequences, provided that I can non, not only tell, but also anticipate or fear or worry about what's coming. It's basically, I mean, I have already said that. <laughs> yeah, that, that's important. Yeah, it's um, knowing, having a logical flow to the action, not just having it like non sequiturs, going 
like shaky cam bloody stuff it's, it's got to have some kind of logical flow to it yeah. pits would you like to give the, us the shaky cam often doesn't let you see sorry the the shaky cam often doesn't even let you see the forms like uh, i remember there was this yeah. uh, sequence in the ninja turtles one of the ninja, ninja turtles movies where you literally just see blurs of shadow uh, sweeping across the screen and you're supposed to be watching action you know? yeah. yeah 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 you know that yeah. it seems like that was used a lot in uh like the early throughout like the mid and even now i think even uh 2000s that shaky camera thing and it's just it's disorienting and it's like it's just a kind of a cop out for when mm -hmm. you don't really know how to show the action really yeah and so mm -hmm. like you want to make it like like you're trying to make the viewer feel more like oh, oh my god everything's crazy everything's blowing up but like <laughs> it's just <laughs> we've seen it so many like maybe the first or second time it happened like maybe it was cool but like we've seen it so much now that it's just like god i'm not 12 anymore dude just show me what the fuck is going on like <laughs> yeah See, like like if things are supposed to be better now with the cgi and everything you should be able to show these effects or that or just don't rely on cgi if that's the problem without shaking the hell out of everything and disorienting it so people don't realize what's going on that's not good yeah 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 that's a good point i mean the the point of shakiness is to try and put you into the action so you're you're like one of the participants not knowing what's going on but if you've ever been in a real fight fights are over in in seconds fights fights are really quick and real fights don't look exciting or interesting to see not even from a shaky cam perspective fights look just crap to be in to be a spectator of or to be part of fights don't look exciting or interesting the way they do in movies so to to make it a thing look like exciting shaky ham's not going to improve it or it's not going to give you a real perspective the only way to make a fight look exciting is to have an expert fighter like jackie chan or someone like who really knows what they're bloody doing because yeah reality is not and it's how you come in a comic or a movie how you organize your shots and your angles yeah. and that's you know, establish your setting and stuff like that. That video on Jackie Chan will, like, goes into all that stuff. And Shaky Cam nice is, is not a shortcut. You're not getting out of it. You're just ruining <laughs> it. Especially that, when you me think of a, so much. Yeah, totally. I, it makes me think of that movie, The Rock. It's pretty old now, but I'm not oh, yeah, 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 Sean Connery. So there's a car chase in this, like, sort of the first third of that movie. That is just like this. It's all close, almost all close-ups of cars and like faces and like things. It's all jittery and it's crazy. Uh, I think it was Nicholas Michael Cage Bay involved film? in that. Yeah, Nicholas. Yeah, Cage. Sean Connery, yeah, and Nicholas was. Cage, Ed Harris. Great movie, actually. Michael. Bay. But that car chase is like nauseating. It's like, like so hard to watch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Michael Bean is in it. Yeah, that's a wicked movie, actually. <laughs> but that car chase is a is just makes you sick. <laughs> you can't tell what's going on and it's, it's everything that you guys just said it, the only part of that movie I ever seen was um, um, back when I was about god 18 or 19 years old I think and I was actually looking into enlisting in the army which I, you guys could probably tell I never went through with it but um, I looked into it a couple times and, and uh, uh, I remember one of the times they when they had us waiting to go in and take the tests and stuff, we had to sit in this waiting room and they had this movie playing and it was the beginning of The Rock and uh, it was that beginning where they have the army guys going in. To uh, I forgot what was going on, but uh, uh, yeah, they're the going, they're breaking in to yeah, they're doing something yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then it, all hell breaks loose, and then one of the guys gets like shut in that room, and like he dies his like this horrible death, and we're all yeah. looking at each other like we we sure we want to be doing this, you know? And, and so that's the other part. Of it. And it didn't have anything to do with anything, but that always brings back that memory whenever somebody yeah. brings that movie up. Uh, so, uh, what I remember is some. Did that did that kill it for you? Or did that kill it for you? No, no. I uh, what killed it yeah. was um. 
I mean, I don't, I don't have any like really interest in like the military aspect of the military. I just wanted to go drive tanks, and they wouldn't let me because I'm a woman. Now they'd let me, yeah. but I couldn't because I'm a lady. Oh, come on, man, a lady. Very loosely defined yeah. as a lady. Still too much <laughs> of a lady. Just, just a lady. <laughs> anyway, well, <laughs> should we read out some more posts or just? Sure. Yeah. All right. Do next, it. next. Up Teach me. Used books. Okay, you can read it. Pit. Used books. Okay, I'll teach myself. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel that way about James Bond movies sometimes. Oddly, not all the time, because most of the time I cannot even remember the plot or place the action sequence to the movie, or give a damn about the characters. However. Most of the James Bond action scenes are good length and interesting enough to be a fun little visceral visual visual amusement park ride. The best action sequences, however, are Jackie Chan. Very active, always amusing, and usually a solid developed cast of characters involved. Some of the wire foo Chinese action films, I like that wire foo. Uh, <laughs> Chinese action films are fun too. I prefer the ones with a comedic slant. I cannot take that kind of thing seriously. Oh, and the worst action movies I've seen have ridiculously short all around camera to pretend action is happening, so that kind of harkens back to what we were talking about. And I can't remember what it was, but I was viewing an action movie on Netflix against the camera cut. They never once showed a complete action. No punches, kicks, connecting... God, that sounds oh, that would that would infuriate you. Ah, yeah. Just before, <laughs> after close up, ugh, it was awful. Kind of like how I half assed my comic art. Oh, I use books. <laughs> but like, God, that's such a tease though, isn't it? Like you just like yeah. you want there's some completionist thing in that. You even not just for the action itself, but just to have something complete, like to not have a punch or a kick carry out. It's just like oh yeah. just like Bandage to put your thing in the thing. Go. Apparently, they oh will happen. Like they'll cut out that. They'll cut out <laughs> that frame of impact. Initially, it was to get a, a, a lower rating, so it wouldn't be rated R or something. But movies uh. kind of started doing it. They would like the last frame of a punch hitting. They'll they'll cut it, and that helps everything not feel real too. It just feels like yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jackie Chan movies do something different. They do a little editing trick to go the other way and make you feel the impact even more. Oh. Uh, apparently, so yeah. so they they cut out. Well, they the do a repetition. Uh, yeah. No, they they'll repeat frames. Like they'll sort of the uh, the impact, and then they'll go back again, the previous frame, and play it again, and then you get the impact again. So you know it's blistering, <laughs> like it's you know. Faster than you can like process the whole thing, but it gives you that effect. Oh, very clever! <laughs> the harder, yeah. I recently I, I went to watch a movie, uh, actually screen a movie, um, where the, they had it was supposed to be like a battle, and although you saw people fighting their their antique weapons, you never saw any any bullet connect with anyone and you never saw any blood and it was the most frustrating thing <laughs> ever because it always cut and you never saw if the guy even got his target you, you never saw that oh. ever oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on was... movie makers you gotta invest in a couple of styrofoam heads fill them exactly. up with pudding <laughs> yeah <laughs> see and it's not TV either. Like, I can understand sometimes when shows like the old Star Trek episodes kind of do that thing. But even they have people. Like, like if they get shot, you don't see them get hit, but they fall down. Yeah, so somebody, there was yeah. payoff. Something yeah. happened sometimes. But, like, yeah, I can understand in TV sometimes why they have to cut back on that a little bit. But when you've got a movie, dude, like, come on. Give a little payout. Just... Yeah. This is your one shot, you know. Have a little bit of payout. Don't treat us like fucking ten year olds. Yeah, well, you you expect. Otherwise, like, specifically for ten year olds, it doesn't. Whatever, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. You expect the the rules of the real real world to to function. Um, action and consequence. And if you break that, then you break the suspension of disbelief. You've got to have action and consequence. 
Well, yeah, because otherwise, then also uh, the shooting, the punches, the kicks, whatever. It's meaningless. Medium you're using for your violence. Absolutely. It's window dressing. That's all it is. Yep. It's superfluous. (laughs) Superfluous. It's it's more fun when things. Aren't you guys glad I didn't go into the army? <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as you can separate the movies from the you know, from reality. Yeah. <laughs> GI pit face here. Yeah. Well, it. I think it's more fun when when you can you can follow things without even thinking about it because. You just you know action and consequence. You don't have to intellectually work out what's happening, like with bloody shaky cam. Um, mm. You can you just know, you know, you know this guy has shot something. You know the bullets hit somewhere or hit someone or whatever. It's a, it, it's more visceral that way. I like that. It sure it takes more work as a director, as an editor, as a comic writer to make things make sense and not to force the audience to connect the dots themselves, which is far easier, no matter what some arty kind of people tell you. It's a lot harder to actually illustrate this stuff deliberately rather than just make people, um, you know, think about it, which is... And it's also maybe a lack of confidence sometimes, right? Like, they want to keep the cuts quick. They want to, They feel like that's the way to... Like, oh, it has to be fast. Like, fast, fast, yeah. fast. Whether cuts or whether, like, whatever. I mean, I know, like, in one of my episodes of Pinky TA, I've got the whole big long action sequence of the two trompers attacking each other, Ace and Pinky hunting each other and firing rockets and guns. I choreographed that out intricately, so I knew exactly how many rockets she was firing, how many he was firing, the maneuvers they'd have to do in order to escape and and oh, well. do this kind of actions, yeah. you know. I I knew exactly and how she'd win the fight and how he would react and all this kind of stuff. I knew it and it was And it shows I I really enjoyed that sequence. Yeah, I think that's probably one of your most memorable scenes from your comic. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. And uh, speaking of that, like, I remember having to do similar, I mean, not in that detail, about how Basil would attack the house, the safe house where they are keeping foot is where he has to attack and overpower quietly this one guard there. So I had to really sit down and think how he would do it (coughs) while being one arm and everything. (laughs) So... You've yeah. got to make that work. Yeah, <laughs> intellectually, you've got to understand the whole thing before you can do it. Which, and I, I think that pays off mm-hmm. because it translates to the audience to something they can understand. I exactly. Like yes, I, they can appreciate more the the action itself. I mean, the stakes and everything when they I can tell what is going on. And whether it is hard or easy, but within the constraints of the believable, yeah. mostly believable. Okay. Should should we? I don't think we've got time enough to read everybody's thing, but maybe we should pick a few choice ones. To so read sure. Out. Choice. Director's choice. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, I'm the director, so I choose me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go ahead, director. So I I made a comment here. Okay. Speaking of an action action to advance plot, Conan the Barbarian is a great example of sensible use of action to inform the story. It begins with the destruction of the young Conan's village. The action swirls around him and it is shown in a very confusing fast cuts with the horror of people being cut down or savaged by dogs but this is all because it's to show it as a child would see it because he's a child and it sets a scene for Conan's character development and his need for revenge later on Um, the individual action sequences in the film are all similarly meaningful and advanced story and they're not just there for spectacle or pointless violence. 
so after his family is sort of savaged and his village is destroyed in this fast action kind of swirling way as a child would see it not being able to really focus on anything specific the next action sequences we've got is Conan fighting in a pit against his enemies and we're seeing the advancement of him as a fighter and we're seeing him develop his skill as a fighter so we're seeing that then after that we've got him um, escaping from dogs and having a confrontation with them so that's the, the him being driven towards you know finding this Atlantean sword and then you know he joins up with this other guy and, and this woman Valeria and they fight this giant snake and rob this yeah. temple and steal the stuff and that sets the scene for more stuff none of the action in that film is um, window dressing or meaningless it all has a meaning further down and it all um, pays off in many different ways and I, th- I think that's the right way that, that's a good example of doing action in a way that advances plot because it it all has some kind of meaning in the story so yeah that's what I how I come at that and, and we have some other replies to that as well if we want to read those or whatever yes um, Paul uh, Bravo mentions that that director of Conan was John Milius and Paul Eberhardt's like yes John Milius knew how to exert loads of action in a way that contributes to the whole thing in a way that's just right same for Tarantino the action there hasn't much to do with realism, but his way of weaving it into the ambiance of cool dialogue and general uh, coolness makes it so awesome, it just doesn't have to. And both fit into the concept of what I said the other day. These guys take themselves more seriously than absolutely necessary. Uh, um, nor does John Wayne. If you don't know what I mean, watch El Dorado or Rooster Coburn. Both films are cliche-ridden, like nobody's business, but they capitalize it capitalize on it in a way that it turns out to be awesome awesome you have to say and Uder <laughs> talks about com- action in comics oh yeah Uder. bring it all the way back Uder, Uder. Uder. I don't remember Uder. how to pronounce it oh dear <laughs> oh dear oh that's right that's how it is oh dear oh dear read, read it in, in a Swedish accent I can't do a Swedish accent <laughs> Often there those who don't practice drawing yeah. those scenes <laughs> and they throw me off a bit when there's action how offensive <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if making an action comic if making action comics you need to actually work on the movements and be able to draw it <laughs> Currently, I am working on it myself. It's not easy, but ha- it has to be done in order to get it right. The most boring thing is when there's action and the characters are boring. The entire balance is an art. Well, more, that's, more, more. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's interesting. <laughs> the, the characters are boring, yeah, so you have to have the, <laughs> the characters yeah. being... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Being interesting. No, no. I love the hand movements at the end. That was perfect. Um, yeah, that that is the thing. You you have to have you have to be interested in it enough, in the characters enough to have it have any meaning. Like I I didn't like action scenes in uh, Chuck Norris movies or um, Bruce Lee because they're both terrible actors. <laughs> Whereas. Jackie Chan is a great actor. He's he's got humor and hu- humanity, and you know, you look at that face, you can't help but smile. But Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris are just stone faced nineteen seventies tough guys, and there's nothing interesting about them. Especially Chuck <laughs> Norris, my God, what a dick! The one that was, uh, however, <laughs> although he, he is exactly as you just described. He still, I think, is I think uh, without wanting it, he becomes funny, and that makes him interesting. Is Jean Claude Van Damme? Oh yeah, I love watching that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I can never take him seriously, although he takes himself seriously. <laughs> Who's that guy from Under Siege? That actor from oh. what? Under Siege. 
Steven Seagal. That's it. Oh Steven my Seagal. god, that guy. Jesus. Same, same category. <laughs> What, one of the things though is is say like Jackie Chan, um, Jean Claude Van Damme, uh, that dick with the mustache, can't remember his Bruce, no, what's his name? Chuck Norris, and Steven Seagal. All these guys, they know how to do martial arts. Believably, they they can do all the stuff that they're acting. But you also have to have a good character, you know, some uh, be engaging in order to um, to be interesting in your action scenes or it just doesn't work very well um Steven Seagal especially uh say for example yeah but it doesn't uh-huh. work so terribly that it's good though <laughs> it is it is so not working that it becomes fun at least I I watch <laughs> I think probably every Steven Seagal movie because it was pizza movie night and we never had more fun than with this guy, be, you know, trying to be super awesome and be. <laughs> <laughs> he, he is hilarious. Yes. Yeah. I I actually watched this like Baines was saying with a, a YouTube thing. There was a YouTube thing about what went wrong with Steven Seagal. Why did he turn into <laughs> such a joke? And it was very interesting. I I won't spoil it. I'll I'll have to link to it or something. But yeah, he he became a joke. Well, anyway, yes, that's I. I didn't mean to this to turn into personal ozone ocean grudges against action movie stars. You can't stand. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I don't know what happened there. Oh, tick them off my list. Bloody Chuck Norris! <laughs> I'll get you one of these days. I'll oh, get you, my baby. <laughs> Listen to this podcast, you'll be crying your eyes out, you bastard. <laughs> that'll teach you to support Donald Trump uh, yes yeah. so what about you guys we're, we're getting up to an hour now but yeah we should do some final thoughts about action that's boring characters have to be interesting have to be engaging no shaky cam we have to see like mm-hmm. consequences of uh, you have to know what's going on. You have to care what's going on. That's it. No one care. Very big, good point. Those are the big, big things right there. No and care. Have Doesn't it. mean it can't look cool, but yeah. but don't trade yeah, one for yeah, the other. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. It can look cool because, as I said before, real fights do not look cool. I mean, even people go on about bloody boxing and MMA and all this, you actually watch fights they don't look nearly as cool as they do in films, real fights and th- those are fights by experts if you ever see actual street fights or you know, you get involved in a fight that's the most uninteresting thing and I don't think you've ever seen people watch those things necessarily because it looks cool I think it's more of a stakes thing like who mm-hmm. do you back, like in like in a lot of sports I mean, basketball doesn't look cool but there's a people that love it yeah 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 so fight uh boxing and mma terrible fights but okay you see meryl streep i'm just kidding what no it's meryl streep (laughs) criticized oh sort of kind of throwaway critique of mma a little topical humor uh, six months later (laughs) oh it's the best kind out of place and out of context I like it um, yeah yes. yeah so you have to know and care and they have to look they don't have to look cool but they should look cool so they don't have to look cool but they have to look cool okay <laughs> <laughs> cooler than reality reality is boring but don't don't hype it up too much there's a balance that's an important thing it has to be a balance between looking cool but not looking cartoonish don't hype it up to uh, what is Scarlett Johansson level <laughs> have it sort of <laughs> just just down below there just a bit above Steven Seagal Go get a happy medium in between those two extremes <laughs> <laughs> that's the level uh, well yeah so there we are I mean it's not only like 
this whole thing's about action scenes. Action scenes don't involve people punching each other. I mean, it could be a ship blowing up. It could be car chases and all yeah, that kind of stuff. So, yeah. yeah, whatever. But yeah. So we we just covered the. I think we kind of use the the fights as like kind of the go to thing because it's our. Yeah. Our we mean fights is generally in place for general action scenes. Maybe I don't know. We we might have to go further in the depth on this sometime if we give it some thought. Yeah. We might have to, but. The principles do apply, though, because Bane's mentioned, like, a car chase in, in some of uh, the rock. So, yeah, it's it's the same principles. If you don't know what's going on, it's a shaky cam. Um, it, if consequences um, aren't sort of seen, you know, if something blows up and no one gets hurt or whatever, or, like, a bomb is about to go off, you don't see it go off. We want our blood, damn it. Yeah. Give us our <laughs> blood. Exploding, arms flying, we've got to see it. So it, I think the principles apply more broadly. It doesn't matter if it's a guy hitting someone or a yeah, plane crashing into a, a boat. I don't know. <laughs> it, it applies. All right. So this has been the, the Quackhouse 309, I believe. The full-on action scenes, full-on. Like I'm punching Pit Face in the in the face right now, in her pit. I'm punching ah! Pit in the face. Ah! <laughs> there we are. <laughs> that's, that's how amazing. Help that. Yeah. Visceral, visceral it was. Thank you everybody for being part of the the quack. You already get back up. Now. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never recover from that. <laughs> I gave your baby black. I gave your 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 granddaughter black eyes. Jeez. <laughs> oh god. Thank you very much for being part of the quick cast, guys. <laughs> it's been a fantastic, terrible, sexist abuser quick cast. Oh god. Bye bye, everyone. <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs>